Jarvis, drop my needle. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Venom Vlog. And I just finished Morbius, uh, me and Ace, who's uh, still sleeping back there. Um, and we just finished Morbius and I have to go have my surgery. I gotta be there in about an hour, a little over an hour. So I thought I would just record my quick thoughts now uh, while I have a little bit of energy and then I'll just save it to my computer and maybe later this week I'll you know edit it and everything uh, when I, after bed rest and you know have a couple days of bed rest and I'll get up to you guys maybe next Monday, hopefully maybe a little bit sooner. Um, I'll do my best. Uh, so, but for now, I'm just I want to get my thoughts out there and an overall review of this movie, which I guess I'll have some spoilers in here because I'll talk about the post credit scenes. Um, so, spoiler alert! But I'm sure some of you or a lot of you probably seen Morbius by now, and if you can't, you can rent it. Uh, I rented it this morning, like really early, and I was like, okay, I got to go get groceries. And I'll come home and hopefully, if I have enough time, I'll watch it. Luckily, I did. So, Morbius, it's Morbin time. Um, I will say this, uh, I guess because I heard a lot of people say they didn't like this movie, it really lowered my expectations and I just had no interest in watching it. So just to have it, I was like, okay, I'm a little excited to finally see it in that regard because it's part of the Venom universe and everything and Spider-Man, you know, whatever Sony's trying to do. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued still, you know, that part has always been intriguing to me, but I just knew it wasn't going to be well done. And that's, that's how I feel. I mean, this movie is, uh, I don't think... It's as bad as people have made it out to be, but it, it's certainly not, you know, a great movie either, or even a, hardly a good movie, uh, in my opinion. Um, now, if you have different opinions, I want to hear them down below, like what you liked and didn't. One thing I will say is I didn't mind the pacing of it. I think it was like an hour and 30 or 40 minutes. Um, it goes by kind of quick, but I felt the beginning, like it takes about 25 minutes before you see him become Morbius. And that was more than I was expecting. I thought they were going to dive right into it, especially when the movie opened with him doing the experiment and capturing some of those bats. Um, so I was surprised, actually. I was really surprised that it still took another 25 minutes because they went through a little bit of his childhood, him making friends with Milo um, or Lucius, which I started thinking, I was like, Michael, Lucius, Michael, Lucifer, brothers who turn against each other, you know, different from the rest, you know, like uh, a two a few against the many, like, you know, Spartans or Archangels or whatever. And I was like, oh, that's kind of fun, like that they played into that, uh, which is, you know, obviously their characters in the comics, but it never dawned on me until I was watching this and paying attention. I was like, oh, yeah, OK. Um, but even, either way, like I still uh I, I liked some of the beginning, like the some of the setup with him as a kid. Um, but there's a lot cut out of this movie. I mean, I was I, so after I watched it, I went back and rewatched like one of the trailers, and I was like, man, there's like stuff with the uh, you know where he's getting the Nobel Prize. In the, in this movie, he straight up doesn't go. He just at the you know the opening of the movie, he's like, yeah, I skipped out. I was supposed to go and accept this award, and I didn't go. And I'm like, wait, so we're we not going to see that scene now uh, that he won the Nobel Prize. So it looks like in this movie, this edit of it. Uh, he got the Nobel Prize and just didn't go and accept it. I guess they wanted to move the story along, but uh, that's weird. I feel like even if you shot footage of that scene, you probably should still put it in there. It's like, as he's talking, he'll, he could say like, yeah, I've won Nobel Prizes before and show us a shot of him accepting that prize. So that way, you, that footage that you spent money and crew members took time out of their day to, to film and everything, you would want to at least use some of that footage, uh, but they use none of it. And it makes me wonder how much of this movie was edited. Once I saw that, I was and realized that I was like, wow, there's probably a lot to this movie that was edited completely differently. And uh, one of which I have I have a theory about with the post credit scene. So we'll talk about that um, in a little bit. I will say I kind of disappeared from keeping up with this movie. We started talking about some of it, talking about Morbius and wedging it into the Venom vlog and stuff. But uh, but I really did start to lose interest. But I'm kind of glad I got distant from it because now I, watching it now with fresh eyes, I kind of felt like, oh, it wasn't that bad. And actually, I was like, it's not great still, but it's like because the dialogue's pretty bad. Um, the, the Some of the pacing, the editing is definitely a little wonky, but I felt like what was there, the origin story was pretty, it was enough to where I'm like, okay, uh, the relationship with the girl, uh, uh, Martine, who's like a Bancroft, who's like his uh, uh, scientist that works with them at Horizon Labs. I love that it was Horizon Labs uh, because that reminded me of uh, the, you know, the Dan Slott Spider-Man run a little bit where 
everyone worked in their own private labs and they had a privacy setting like Peter Parker w joked that he worked in the, you know, in the buff or worked in his underwear because he had to throw his Spider-Man costume, you know, into a, a closet real quick. And then uh, they, they, you know, the scientists came in, they're like override security, you know, protocol, blah, blah, blah. And they came in and he's standing there in his boxers. Uh, so, and then he had to make up some dumb thing where he's like, yeah, I, I listen to head, I listen to like Britney Spears music and dance in my underwear. So the the protocols of uh, the privacy protocol thing, I was like, oh, that's a neat little nod to Horizon. Um, and then also Michael Morbius doing the, you know, the experiment out in open waters. I'm like, well, okay, that there's some logic to that. Like they were like, oh, this is illegal. So we're going to have to do it where the U.S. government can't, you know, we can't get in trouble for doing it. And that also puts them on a ship, which is in the original Spider-Man appearance that Morbius appears in. It's he comes off of a ship like he killed a bunch of people on a ship and came up to shore in uh, in I think it was uh, Louisiana at, or like the swamps of Louisiana or something like that because it was a Spider-Man six armed Spider-Man versus lizard down in the bayou and uh, and then Morbius shows up and I can't remember if it was Louisiana or if it was Florida Everglades I can't remember but either way Morbius was on a boat that was his first uh, his first appearance in a comics as he came off a boat after having killed everyone on the boat. So that was neat that they kind of found a way to wedge that into the story and have it to where he killed a bunch of mercenaries. Um, but then after that, it kind of gets a little wonky. You know, he, he reconnects with Milo, who's been funding him all these years, and their uh, professor who, um, you know, saw potential in both of them, you know, is still in their lives, you know, checking in on them and stuff. So that was all okay. But then once he started, you know, Morbius starts getting framed for murdering uh, people as a vampire, uh, you know, because he's obviously the key suspect in the uh you know in the all the mercenaries dying on the boat or in the, the sub or whatever they took out on, onto the sea it wasn't a sub i think it was just like a tanker ship and since martine bancroft she was the only survivor you had these two fbi agents one of them played by tyrese who was coming to question her and he's like trying to figure out you know she, hey he's like hey i know you work for michael morbius we looked into your background and everything so he's starting to piece things together but what i noticed is almost every scene he's in he has his hand in his pocket and i'm like what is the deal with that he, like in every scene he's like just hand in his pocket and then I had to go look up because I forgot about this. I guess he was supposed to have a robot arm. And I think there are scenes of him, like behind the scenes shots of him with a robot arm. And uh, and they cut that whole storyline out of the movie. He says to Morbius or Michael Morbius, he says, you know, I should probably should thank you. Even though I'm arresting you, I should probably thank you. Like you're a suspect in this case, but you also created artificial blood. And that is what helped me keep my arm at, after, uh, you know, an incident in Afghanistan when I was, you know, uh, uh, you know serving over there. And Morbius is like, oh, okay, you know, I'm glad I could help in some way. So I'm like, okay, well, so so he doesn't have a bionic arm then? Because those pictures showed him with one. But in that scene, he actually had his arm in his pocket the whole time. So you couldn't see his hand. So definitely a lot of a lot of editing in this movie, like a whole lot of stuff. Um, and then it's like building that, you know, uh, uh, Milo or Lucius, he, he, he takes the serum, becomes a vampire too, or whatever they are, living vampires. And he kills some people and he's framing Morbius for it and trying to, you know, kind of get back at him, trying to make him wake up and realize, screw your old human life. We are Spartans. We are the Archangels. We are the few against the many. Like, come on, let's go evolve and, and be something together. We're brothers. Um, and uh, and then he's like, you know, no, this is a curse. And I, I became a doctor. And I wanted to save lives. I saved your life when we were kids, you know. So I'm I'm here to, you know, to do that. And And, and if I have to kill myself to make sure this doesn't spread or hurt anyone else, then I'm gonna do that. Um, but I have to stop you first. And so that kind of builds their you know, uh, rivalry throughout the movie. And then at the end, Lucius just is like, all right, I'm gonna kill our mentor. I'm gonna kill your girlfriend. And then I'm, and then I'm gonna leave you no choice but to either join me or, or fight me to the death, uh, which they do. And so he, uh, Michael comes up with a serum that he injects uh, Lucius with, and that takes away his powers and then makes him a feeble human again because they were both dying they you know most of their lives they were dying and needing blood to to sustain themselves and stay alive and then you know he uh, lucius dies um but there's so many plot threads that were never like touched on like the little girl at the beginning michael's able to help her you know through like a like a, um, a seizure or something that she's having where she's uh her blood uh, pressure is dropping and her heart rate's dropping and he's able to save her uh, but then but it's not a long-term cure so they never touch back on that. They never go back to the little girl and, and show him like uh, save her at the end, come in and you know put something in her IV to like save her life or something. He never really comes up with a cure at all for what's happening to him. Um, and then, but he ends up, uh, his girlfriend, uh, Martine Bancroft, she ends up getting infected in some way. I think when they kiss, she bites his lip and drinks some of his blood and then he bites her 
I think, to take some of her blood so he could be juiced up for the final battle against uh, Matt Smith's Lucius. But, uh, but you know, then I don't know. I don't, so then she turns, like, right before the end credits. Um, so the fighting, I kind of liked that there was a lot of scenes where he's, they're jumping around and there's, like, a mist behind them and stuff. And I thought that stuff kind of looked cool. And the transformations, actually, I thought looked really good. Um, so there was some really, they definitely took their time with some of the visual effects you know, to, to make them look at, you know, as good as they could. And I, I liked it. I thought the face transformations, the claws, like all that stuff was, was really well done. Um, but I, there was just some things in this that I was like, man, this is so massively chopped up. It's like, it's, and it's so obvious. Like you would get these scenes that would go on for like five minutes that are really good scenes. And I'm like, Hey, I like this. They took their time here, but then you would get scenes that were just like, chip, 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 you know, like every like five seconds, like cut, 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 cut. And uh, it just, it made for a very disjointed uh, overall uh, experience watching the movie on some level. But it wasn't a like hard story to follow because it was very basic. I mean, I feel like these writers are very basic writers, nothing super inventive uh, in this movie. Um, you know, everything I thought that was creative that they pulled was from the comic book. So it's like, I, I almost give them no credit for the few cool things I liked in this movie because I'm like, yeah, those are those are things from the comics. Um, although the sonar thing was pretty neat. I think that was touched on in the comics before, but the way it was visualized, I've got to give the director credit. I thought he pulled it off really well here. So, um, so yeah, I mean, overall, I kind of liked it. But as far as the editing goes, the scene where uh, Morbius is in prison halfway through the movie uh, where he's been, uh, you know, accused of murdering a, a female a co-worker of his uh, when it wasn't him, it was Matt Smith, you know, who plays Lu Lucius. So uh, Jared Leto's Morbius is in jail, and I feel like that's probably originally where, uh, and this is where we get into spoilers, where, um, I, and I know you guys probably already know all about all this, but Michael Keaton shows up as, in the post credit scenes as the Vulture. The purple sky from uh, the end of Spider-Man No Way Home rips open, and then he just appears in a jail, an empty jail cell. Like, how, how lucky. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of a little bit confused by that, but I'm wondering if that scene was supposed to happen earlier in the movie, and then I think because there's in the in the trailers you see him talking like, "Hey, what's up, Doc?" Like, you know, uh, or yeah, they have like some exchange in the trailer where they're talking to each other. Um, so I'm thinking maybe originally they were supposed to meet partway through the movie, and then maybe more, you know Morbius and him build some kind of weird antihero friendship because you know the the Vulture was a bad guy robbing and stuff like that. But when it came time for him to give up Peter Parker's identity, he didn't do it. Uh, you know, so. I'm wondering what they're what they're gonna play with that, how they're gonna pull all this together in a way. You know, are there is their version of Sinister Six gonna be anti-heroes or is it is Vulture like I don't know, is he like new world, I'm away from my family and daughter, I can be free and kill whoever I want here? Like, I don't know what's gonna happen. Like I cause I'm like, did you guys forget he had a whole family in the Spider-Man movies? Uh, but he shows up at the end credits and I'm thinking, oh, maybe he was meant to be earlier in the movie, and maybe there's supposed to be another scene or two with him in it. Because at the end, Morbius uh, in the actual post credit scene, like the far, the one that's like halfway through the credits, near closer to the end of the everything, um, he takes. And sorry, you hear itching back here. Hey, thank you. Um, <laughs> he, uh, you have Morbius driving out into the middle of nowhere, and he looks at his watch, like he's supposed to meet somebody. And I'm wondering if earlier in the movie he had a conversation, and they said like, hey, if we ever we ever get out of here, you know, maybe we should uh, meet up sometime, you know, like three o'clock, you know, and he lists the place. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that was dialogue that was cut out that would explain that end credit scene a little bit better. Um, but I mean, either way, it does feel really forced and, and just crammed in there. But again, it's because I think they had a plan for that to try to make it make a little bit of sense. But then the movie got edited up and they said, all right, we'll just stick both these scenes up in the end credits. Um, so, yeah, it, it kind of feels very disjointed. Um, but overall, like, I'm not upset I watched the movie. I'm glad I didn't go see it in the theaters, though, uh, for sure. Uh, it was fine to, to watch at home and, and uh, to get it in today before my surgery. So uh, so those are my thoughts. You know, like, I, I just thought it was OK. It, it seems kind of on par with overall what Sony's doing, like Venom and the Venom Let There Be Carnage movies. I like them. They're fun, but uh, hey, Ace. Um, but they're uh, you know they're 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 like sevens, you know, sevens and eights, you know, maybe. And I feel like this is maybe like a six. You know, this is a little bit under those for me. Um, but uh, but I just thought because Jared actually didn't look bored in the movie. Jared Leto, he looked like he was committed to the the character, um, which he normally is. You know, I don't. I'm not going to discredit the guy as an actor. He seems like a weird guy in real life, but as an actor, I mean, he he committed to the role and there were scenes where I thought he showed some good emotion 
And then even Matt Smith, he was like a real fun, he was real fun to watch actually as the villain. Um, he seemed like he was really, he was like a kid in a candy store. He was like, oh, I've been, you know, uh, dying my whole life. And now I'm like alive and, and I'm having fun and he's dancing. He's like having a good time. He's like hamming it up. So I didn't mind the two of them. I thought they kind of carried this movie and, and scenes where they were together, I kind of enjoyed. And it was enough for me to go, okay, I, I, you know, I might step this up from a, a four or five rating up to a six rating just because of, I thought they had a little bit of chemistry together and it kind of worked out, you know, for me at least, it kind of worked. Uh, but it is rushed, it's very edited and it's a, it's disjointed for sure. And I hate to, you know, slam that word into the ground and beat it over and over, but that's how I felt when I was watching this. And then after going back and watching the trailer afterwards and comparing it, I was like, wow, yeah, this movie was massively edited down. So who knows, maybe we'll get a morbid cut of this movie. But overall, that's my thoughts on this movie. Uh, let me know your thoughts down below and we'll continue talking down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I will see you guys in the future. Peace. Say goodbye, Ace. Bye, Ace.